morning and welcome to the brand new MG ZS EV, a car that I've been waiting ages to get my hands on to have a test drive. And I've got it for the whole day today to see what it's like. But what I wanna be able to answer at the end of today is whether this represents an absolute bargain, really good value for money that we've all been wanting, or whether, like most things in life, you just get what you pay for. This video is sponsored by Just EVs, a great family run company with the largest selection of battery electric vehicles available with free and immediate UK delivery. Have a look at justevs.co.uk or click the link below. And don't forget to mention EV Opinion for a free annual service. Let's start today's tour of this car right here at the front and front and center is this MG badge. But please be under no illusion, this is not an MG as we know it here in the UK from days gone by. This is a Chinese car. It's built by a company called SCIA. They build an awful lot of cars in China. They're very, very successful. But let's be honest, if they brought one of their cars over here with that badge on it, it probably wouldn't sell very well at all. So they've bought the rights to the MG badge. They've stuck it on the front of this car and they're, they're selling it as the MG brand brand, which gets us interested because there's that little bit of nostalgia, isn't there? We, we as Brits, love the MG brand and uh, we will probably happily buy this car because of that badge alone. But it's more than just a badge, of course it is. And people have said all sorts of things about how this car looks like different cars and there's no doubt about it, it's a real mismatch of various cars that we see on the market today. I think the front of this car looks very, very much like a Mazda. And while we're here at the front, underneath this badge, if I push it, <laughs> pops open, goes up in the air, and here we've got our CCS charging. Now CCS, it will charge on AC on type two at just over seven kilowatts, on DC on full CCS, just over 50 kilowatts. So it's not the most advanced when it comes to charging of electric cars nowadays, but it's perfectly acceptable. That will get you a reasonable charge. Uh, I think uh, if you look at DC, it's about 120 miles an hour on charging when it's at its optimum peak level of charging. But one thing I will point out here at the front is the way that this comes up, not only is that incredibly flimsy, if you get a wire caught on that, I can see that ripping straight off, but it's also really awkward. So if you're stood up trying to get to it, and pulling off these caps. It's all right, because I'm squatting down here, but you're probably not gonna to wanna to do that every time. So it's not the best thought out design in the world, I've gotta be honest. Now we come from the front where I think it looks quite nice and imposing, to the side where I think it looks a bit, well, dull, to be honest. There's not an awful lot going on here. We see keyless entry, that is the same across the range. So we've got the Excite and the Executive, the Executive being the top level, that's what this one is. And uh, you'll find the Excite gets an awful lot of the features that the Executive gets. Uh, and I think it offers really, really good value for money. We'll talk about the prices later. But the side of this car is pretty uneventful, isn't it? There's not an awful lot going on here. The wheels, I think, look quite nice, but uh, whether you can see it here on the grass or not, certainly on concrete, they don't fill the wheel, wheel arches. In fact, they get nowhere near it. They look a little bit puny and uh, I, I I don't like those. I think they need to be a bit bigger, but I get there's a compromise between how it looks and the efficiency of it being an electric vehicle. Uh, let's go and have a look at the back and see if it gets any better. And yes, I think it does get better if you divide it into two sections. Take the top section, I think it looks really, really nice. This high level brake light with the aerial coming across. Uh, MG badge looks really nice. You've got the extra EV badge here above and beyond what you'd see on the petrol car. And I like this rear light cluster. I think that looks nice. Take the bottom section, I think we start to look a bit cheap. Again, from a distance, when you walk up to it, it, it looks okay, but when you start touching it and playing with it, it's quite flimsy and going over a rattly B road here in the UK, I think that could make a bit of noise in the cabin. So not so good there. I like how the boot opens, flick the badge, up comes the, the boot lid. And inside, well, you'll see this nice mat. That is part of a protection pack. That's a, a, an additional cost when you buy it. You get the mat, you get some mud flaps, and you get some mats inside the car. But um, the boot itself is a cracking size. You've got loads of room in there. In fact, it's a 470 litre boot. Underneath these uh, mats, if we lift up the floor, you find that um, there's some more storage space under here. So you can put your, your charges and leads and bits and pieces under there out of the way. And there's also, there's a, another little shelf. So you could bring the whole floor up a little bit to give you more room underneath. And uh, when you split this, uh, what's that? A 70-30 split 
fold rear seats. If you bring the floor up to that level, it then gives you a perfectly flat uh, area to be able to slide in whatever you need. Uh, if you leave the floor low, then you do get a little bit of a lip. But on the whole, that's a cracking size boot. And uh, talking about the size of the whole car, I would suggest it's somewhere between the size of a Nissan Duke and a Nissan Qashqai. So plenty of room, ideal size for a family. It sits in that kind of middle, compact, mid-size SUV kind of segment. So let's look inside this car and see how it stacks up. And well, very much like the outside, first impressions, when you walk up to it, it looks really, really nice. Inside, you get in and it looks lovely and tactile and everything looks really, really nice. The bits that you're going to use in the main and the bits that your focus is drawn to, they've obviously made some real efforts to, to make them look very, very nice. But when you start to touch it, and you start to look away from the focal points in here, you start to find that, well, maybe all isn't quite as good as you initially thought. And I think this is very similar to a Renault Zoe. I find the same when I get into a, a Zoe. It looks amazing. All those things that your, your focus of attention is drawn to, they've spent a, a great deal of time designing, and I'm sure that's part of that design process. It keeps the price down. It makes you feel like you're in something that's a lot more special than it actually is. Well, as soon as I touch this steering wheel, it feels cheap. But yet when I look at it, it looks like an expensive steering wheel. The dials in front of me look absolutely brilliant. But when you start to use them and you start to go through the menus, it's really quite laggy. The center console, this lovely shiny bit here in the middle with this sort of brushed, it looks almost like brushed black aluminium. It looks really, really nice. It's not, it's plastic. Uh, but you come away from that and you start to see, well, actually some of these other materials are a bit cheap. The door feels really cheap. The seats was comfortable and this has got the electronic adjustment on it. Actually, they're, they're not overly supportive. And when I look in the back, it doesn't, they don't look quite as good as the ones in the front. We'll come onto the back in a minute. And then when I move across to the passenger side, well, this all looks a little bit unfinished. It looks like they've given you a bit of room for your legs, but actually this glove box is very small and the materials used really aren't very good at all. But build quality wise, how it's put together, it actually looks very good. And if you do the old Tesla test, as I like to call it now, wobble the dashboard, there is no movement. There's where things join on, maybe a, a touch there, that's being hypercritical. There's nothing here that feels like it's about to fall off. What I'm seeing is a combination of some clever design to make it feel good with some budget materials to keep the price down. There's nothing wrong with that, but just be aware that that is what you're getting when you, you buy this car. But apart from that, view out the front is great. When I start it up, you know, all the information is there in front of me. It, um, it's very analog, this car in front of you. So rather than uh, what we see on a lot of EVs now is a lot of digital screens that you can change and update. I've got two analog dials in front of me, which gives it that kind of almost a retro feel. I do notice these two air vents though, because it's sunny today, they reflect straight into my wing mirror, slap bang in the middle, which can be a bit distracting, it's not the best. But this screen here in front of me, it's a good size and I can navigate my way around it. Uh, it gives me lots of options around entertainment. And what I particularly like about this is it comes out standard with Apple CarPlay, which is a, it's a real bonus as far as I'm concerned. I use it all the time in any car that I'm in. Some of the other features you get in here, well, you get heated seats, albeit there is no adjustment on them. The heated seat is either on or off and it gets quite hot. Also, my air conditioning, there's no climate control. Again, it's just set the temperature and the blowers and away it goes. So all around this car, you can start to see where they are cutting the corners in order to keep the cost of this down to get it to that brilliant level that we're, we're seeing, the headline price. And to give you an idea of price, this executive is just under £25,000 when you bring the government grant of three and a half grand into play. And the Excite, the lower one, is just under twenty-two. dollars So uh, it represents, I think, really good value for money when you're looking at the EV market as a whole. Uh, in this one, you do get a few extras, like this lovely big panoramic sunroof. Uh, that, that just comes on the executive. The executive also gets the... Uh, in the wing mirrors it tells you if there's a car overtaking you and a blind spot warning from behind but both get rear camera they get uh, sensors on the back the the vast majority of the package is the same but i think that extra couple of grand is well worth it when you consider you get this leather trim as well as that sunroof i think it um 
it's not a lot extra to get quite a bit extra within the car, which I really like. So practicality wise, while storage space is good, I've got some holes in the door here. I've got uh, this rubber mat here with a little hole which goes down to, there's a storage space underneath with the, some USB uh, charging ports. So another rubber mat where I can store stuff, but I could also run a lead up through onto this mat here on the top and have my phone up here. I've got this bit that pulls back two nice big size cup holders, no issues getting any coffee cups or water bottles in there. And then another cubby hole here to chuck bits and pieces in. So there's plenty of storage space here. And from a practicality point of view, everyday use, the things that you're going to get in and chuck down quickly, there's places for everything. Let's have a little look in the back and see how it is back there. Excuse all the bings and bongs and bells and horns going off. It's one thing this car, it, it seems to have a warning for absolutely everything. And certainly one of them where the horn beeps three times when you get out, uh, that's gonna drive your neighbors potty. But um, it, well, it's part of the features. So I'm sorry they keep going off. But in the back here, well, as I said, the seats themselves, they don't quite feel as good as the ones in the front, but they're fine. They feel a bit softer and, um, well, if I adjust everything to the right place here, so my head restraint is, is pretty good. I feel like I can sit comfortably in here. I'm five foot nine, that's set up for my driving. I've got enough room there, my feet just tucked under. This roof is fantastic. You can bring this blind all the way forward to cover it up, but I love having that space and view and the extra light that comes in, it's really, really nice. Uh, if I sit up straight, you can see because of it, because it pops a roof, I've got loads of headroom here. If you were six foot, you wouldn't have any issues sitting in the back here at all. Uh, again, the doors, the material doesn't feel great, but the build quality, I would say was average. It's a, not, again, not as good as it is in the front, but it feels all, all okay. The roof lining all feels, it's quite tactile. It's a bit squishy to, to touch. I've got these pockets, storage pockets behind the seats, and I've got myself a, a USB plug here to plug into with a little cubby hole that I can put some bits and pieces in. Not an awful lot else back here, but uh, I think you'd be comfortable even as an adult sat in the back here traveling along. So that's enough sat here talking about the car. Let's go and have a drive and see what it's like. Getting into this car, what I found, it's very easy to get comfortable in here. There, the steering wheel will go up and down, but it won't go in and out. But the seats, there's a decent amount of adjustment on them. And um, I, I, I feel quite comfortable in here. It, it's an F SUV at the end of the day. So yes, you feel like you're sat up. You can see the bonnet. You can see all around you. It's, it's a nice position to drive in. What I've also noticed, and I haven't done any speeds yet, is that it's quite noisy in here for an EV. I can hear quite a lot of road noise from the tires. And I'm just coming onto a dual carriageway now, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like with wind noise, whether that, um, that's been addressed or not. And to be honest, for an EV, it's not great. There's a, there's a bit, bit of a whine from the motor, which you expect. From those little wheels, I was, I was definitely expecting better. There's it's a bit too much road noise coming from them and there's a decent amount of wind noise. And I think most of it's coming off these wing mirrors near me, just to the side here. So don't get me wrong, this is in no way a noisy car, but when you compare it to other electric vehicles, it's certainly not the quietest. And that little bong there, I don't know if you heard it, I started straying towards the central line. It's just to warn me that I was there. Let's give it a go. If we engage our cruise control, because of course this comes with a cruise control and it comes with lane assist, so if I set the speed, and yeah, you know, it, it works absolutely fine as you would expect it to, very much like some of the other systems and some, some of the other cars that we've driven recently, that it gives you that added built-in safety feature that you, you need or you hope for with lane assist, cruise control. It makes sure the distance stays from the car in front. You're still driving the car, it's not autopilot, but it seems to work okay in here. Another feature as well, we've got three levels of regen. It's called Curs on here. I'm coming downhill now. If I put it onto three, heavy regen. Do you know what? It made absolutely no difference here as I went through the modes. It might have been because I was driving. I've not had that on an EV before. So let's go to level one. If I lift off, it rolls. Bring up some speed again. If I go to level two, now if I lift off, Okay, it didn't feel an awful lot different. Level three now, it says heavy regeneration level. 
got to be honest, I'm not feeling an awful lot of difference. It, looking at the battery, I think I've still, it should be warm enough and it should have used enough now that it allows the regen because if the battery is fully charged, it won't let full regen. Don't really know there. It says it should be heavy. I'm not feeling masses there. We'll come back to that maybe later. We'll do a, bit, a few more miles and see what happens. But while I'm doing that, looking at this screen here, I really like these analog displays. One on the left is my speed. The one on the right, it looks like a revometer, but it's not. It's telling me how much energy I'm using. As I put my foot down, the needle goes up and it drops off as I take my foot away. It, um, it's, it's quite nice to look at that. Some of the other things I've noticed in here, oh, I spoke about the tactile nature of some of the materials used and maybe they weren't the best. And when you're driving, you do start to feel it. So this steering wheel, I really don't like the feel of. It looks like it should have a soft bit and a firmer bit. It's not, it's all quite hard. And when I was changing the wing mirrors, just adjusting them, the, the, the little knob that you twist to do that, it doesn't feel very well made. It feels like if I gave that a good tug, it would come off in my hands. So as I've said right from the off, that feeling of quality, it, it isn't in here, but we do have to remember the price of it. Now the battery of this car, it sits in the floor under the, underneath out the way. It's a 44.5 kilowatt hour battery. It adds about a, a quarter of a ton to this vehicle over the ICE equivalent. But what it does do is it gives us a range of, and I think realistically, 140 miles. I think if you're a bit careful, you push up towards 150. Uh, you do see in some of the brochures, they talk about it being closer to 200. There's no way this thing is gonna do 200 miles to a charge. So if you reckon on 140, I really don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Top speed is 87 miles an hour and you'll get to 60 miles an hour in just under eight and a half seconds, which I think is pretty respectable for a car that is designed for a family. You're not really, if it, this as a petrol or a diesel will get nowhere near that. So I think that's, it, it's nice performance. It's where you expect an electric vehicle to be. And power wise, well, you've got 141 horsepower getting you up to that speed. So it's a nice package when you look at the, the, the figures. You're not expecting it to be a racing car. You just want a good car that can get you in and out of trouble and, and give you enough power that you need it without it being silly that your insurance premiums go through the roof. And I can definitely say that off the line and overtakes, this is more than adequate. I've now had a chance just to drive this car a little bit quicker on, on some uh, more progressive roads. And what I'm finding is I, I think the tires aren't helping it because I'm sure from an efficiency point of view, they're very good. But what I'm finding is just a little bit of weave. I'm constantly just correcting my position in the lane. So it's, it's nothing too much and you do do it sub subconsciously, but I'm definitely having to just correct my position as I'm driving around, just keeping things all, all straight and in order, which I don't find I have to do on many other cars. And the actual ride itself, well, it's a bit of nothing really. It's not firm, it's not soft. When you go over bumps, you definitely hear them. You hear a little bit of a, a clunk as you go over. This isn't the most refined car I've ever driven. I think that's probably the, the easiest way to sum it up. It, it's getting from A to B, it's doing what it needs to do, but it really isn't doing it in a graceful way. It's just getting you there. I would stop short of calling it agricultural, but compared to things like the Leaf, even the Zoe, which I know is a smaller car, it doesn't feel as refined as either of those two cars. So I'm just going to play with that curves again. So if I put it back up to level three and I lift off, no cars around me, nothing, nothing, nothing. It starts to kick in there now. I can feel it kicking in. Will it bring me to a stop or not? It's brought me right down. That's five miles an hour. So it doesn't bring you to a stop. You keep rolling. If I go back up now, I'm still on level three, which is the firmest. That's 30 miles an hour, lift off can't feel it, can't feel it. Now I can feel it kicking in. So it gives you a little bit of play actually. So if you were just adjusting your speed coming up behind a car, it gives you a little bit of follow on, a little bit of roll, but then it starts to kick in. But by no means is that the firmest regen I've ever felt. That's, it's quite soft in comparison to a lot of the other cars that I've driven recently and certainly the more modern electric vehicles. 
And also down here with these switches next to the curves, I've got one that says battery, and that tells me how many miles I've got left until my range is up, and one that says mode. And I've got three modes. I've got eco, normal, and sports. I've been driving it in normal, which has been, it's been okay. There's a little bit of power when I put my foot down. Uh, if I move it to sport now, I get a nice bit of orange on my display. If I put my foot down there, I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's your electric vehicle. Pick up off the off, from very low down, loads of torque, no problems at all. If I put that down to eco now and put my foot down, yeah, if you put your foot down, the power still engages, but you're when you're just driving normally, it just it softens that power and makes it a little bit more manageable and obviously preserves your battery a bit. And finally, being an SUV, you do expect a certain amount of off-road capabilities. I'm not saying this is a, a Land Rover, but I've brought it down this track here, which is really quite potholed and full of water, and it's, it's dealing with it perfectly okay. Yes, there are a few clunks on some of the bigger bumps I'm hearing from some of the uh, suspension, but if I lived in a rural area, the, the majority of the time, that I just wanted to go down tracks and small lanes, I think this would be absolutely fine. So that's it, the end of a full day of driving this car. And I think before I give you my final verdict, there's a few other little bits that I need to tell you about so that you can make an informed decision if you are thinking of buying one of these cars. Now, I spoke about how I thought this was quite unrefined for an electric vehicle. If you come from a petrol or diesel car, then uh, it, it will feel like a Rolls Royce. But um, as an electric car driver, this isn't a particularly refined vehicle. But there's a few other little areas that I think uh, don't really help it. So for example, I was sat in the back with somebody else in the driver's seat. I could see the steering column turning down by the driver's feet as they were going around corners not something I've really ever noticed in any other car before. And when you're driving, if your foot gets in the wrong position, you can feel it turning there. I don't really think that's good enough. Under the bonnet, obviously this car's designed for a petrol and diesel as well. So a great big space under there with a little tiny electric motor and some other bits and pieces that have been fitted in there. It's not been finished off at all. You just open it and you can see everything. There's no cap, there's nothing in there. It just looks unfinished. And with that, you can see lots of little bits of, uh, light coming through from the outside where I would be afraid that water would be able to get in. So little things like that just mean that it's not quite finished, but at the end of the day, it's a budget car. So you have to make some compromises. But for me, the biggest issue and the biggest problem I have with it is the NCAP safety rating. Now that is out of five stars, this scores three stars. And you could say, well, yeah, of course, because it's not just about the, the safety of the people in the car, it's also about pedestrians, people outside the car. But when you actually get down into that report, there's two key areas for me that really concern me. The first, it criticised the front seat passenger and how they could get injured. The second is it criticised its safety around children between six and 10 years old. That's my family. They are the people that I'm gonna be putting in this car doing thousands of miles that I want to be safer than anybody else in the world. Again, just not good enough for me, I'm afraid. But that brings me to the end and my final conclusion. And what do I think of this vehicle? And that question that I asked about whether, well, value for money. This, for me, like everything else in life, you get what you pay for. There's no doubt about it. This isn't gonna start competing with a Hyundai Kona. It, it just, there is no way. But that's not to say that this isn't a cracking car and this won't sell really, really well. Because as long as you go to the dealer with all that information I've given you and you're happy with it, then the cost of this car at the moment with the grants is exceptional in the EV market. And I think that I could take that one step further. It's not about the sum of this car. It's about the sum of electric vehicle sales. And what this has proved is you make an EV for a price point that is far below anything else on the market and gives you some decent tech and uh, equipment within the car, people are gonna flock to buy it. People can't get enough of this car. It's selling so, so well. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to like and share. If you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, have a look at the Patreon link. And until next time, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you soon. All the best.